Hello and welcome to the episode 288 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The first time George, John, Paul and Ringo ever played together, the media going even more crazy about the Beatles and the Beatles' political stances in 1964 are some of the things we'll ponder in this episode. Let's start with a truly historic moment. On the 15th of October 1960, the de facto manager of the Beatles, Alan Williams, visited the band in Hamburg, West Germany, where they were having their first residency, alternating with Rory Storm and the Hurricanes on the stage of the Kaiser Keller Club. Rory's bass player, Lou Waters, had expressed the desire to record some songs as lead singer, paying for the recording out of his pockets. Williams decided to arrange a session, booking a small studio called Acoustic. He then co-opted George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney to play guitar and Rory's drummer, Ringo Starr, to complete the impromptu five-piece band. It was the first time the four played together, and what's more, it happened in a studio environment. Alan Williams himself, Stuart Sutcliffe, bass player of the Beatles, and Johnny Byrne and Ty Bryan of the Hurricanes looked from the control room as the quintet recorded a version of George Gershwin's Summertime. After that, it is believed that Waters and Starr recorded Fever and September Song with Byrne and Bryan on guitar. Allegedly, Lennon and McCartney wanted to use the remaining studio time to try and record some of their songs, but Williams, afraid that they could be late for their 8 pm slot at the Kaiser Keller, decided to conclude the session. At night, the Beatles, reuniting with their current drummer Pete Best and with Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed for the 12th evening at the Kaiser Keller. Perfectly on time. Double feature for the Beatles in 1961, with the return of John and Paul from their French trip, as we covered in episode 273 of this podcast, the lads, now a quartet with Paul McCartney on bass and Pete Best still on drums, performed a 10-minute slot at a charity event at the Albany Cinema in Muggle, a village near Liverpool. The Beatles were out of place in the three-hour event, surrounded by local authorities, comedians, traditional jazz bands, classical areas and that sort of thing. At night, the band was busy with a more mundane engagement, a concert at the Hambleton Hall in Liverpool, organised by Wally Hill and Vic Anton. In 1962, the Beatles played the Majestic Barham in Birkenhead for the tenth time in their career. By this time, Ringo Starr had become their official drummer. 1963 News that the Beatles had accepted a late August invitation to appear before the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret at the annual Royal Command performance came out in the papers on this date. It might have seemed impossible that anything could have brought up another notch the media frenzy surrounding the Fabs after their appearance at the London Palladium, see episode 286 for that. But this announcement made it. Hordes of journalists surrounded the Floral Hall in Southport, where the Beatles were booked to appear during the evening, but any assault was futile. Nobody managed to speak with the lads. Or did they? Derek Taylor, future press officer for the Beatles, recounts how he managed to meet the four in his 50 Years Adrift book. Taylor himself candidly admits to stretch the quotes he collected to get a slightly better story, so, as with many other Beatles stories, we cannot really tell how much truth there is in what he says. In 1964, the Fabs were live at the Globe Cinema in Stockton on Tees to perform two shows for their current British tour. The visit coincided with a general election in the United Kingdom, which returned Harold Wilson's Labour Party in power 
after 13 years. The Beatles were asked about their voting intentions during an interview with a Time Peace TV reporter, but they dodged the questions all the time. The interview was broadcast on the 16th of October, between 6.35 and 7 pm, for Northeast Newsview. Let's close the episode with yet another White Album studio session, in 1968. Between 6 pm and 8 pm, Happiness is a Warm Gun was mixed in stereo, and I'm So Tired and Cry Baby Cry were mixed in stereo and mono at the EMI studios. And since we are closing our dances for the day, what better moment to remind you to give a look at all the things you can do to support this podcast? Head to www.simonmas.com support and choose how you want to get involved. On that page, you'll also find a link to the NFTs of the deluxe version of What A Fab Day, if you want to acquire that. Thank you for any help you will want to give me. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.